54, STP has been on the leading edge of performance, helping engines run better longer. For the latest info on NASCAR, visit NBCSports.com slash Inside the Garage. And the overcast skies have apparently scared enough people that that is going to end qualifying for the Monster Energy Cup Series, meaning Kyle Busch will start from the pole. He won the pole, which is his 22nd pole in his 444th start. This will be. Well, and swept the poles. Yes. He's on both the Xfinity race and the Cup race. It's been a good day of qualifying for Kyle Busch. He's going to climb back out of the 18. We want to take a look at the starting grid now. So it's Kyle Busch who has once again won the pole. Mark Truex Jr. And one of the things that I'm noticing here are the fact that there are quite a few Toyotas that are going to be starting up front. Yeah, Mark Truex Jr. has the wins, but no Joe Gibbs driver has gone to victory lane yet this year. This has got to be a good sign to see all four inside the top ten. And Suarez being the fourth of the... JGR cars, and Brad Kozlowski was starting outside of that fifth row. Then back the next row, Joey Legato needing a win, another driver that needs a win to secure a spot in the playoffs, and he'll start on the inside of row six. And typically, he's one, you know, he's beat pays. The last place you want to start is on the outside, so I know that they have talking about dragging tires and doing more to help this racetrack, but everybody you see starting on the outside, they are not happy. They're nervous about having no grip when this race starts. He'd much rather start on the inside right now. Back through 13 through 16. We talked about Ryan Newman back there in row 15. He'll have to go to the back of the field. We know that already uh, for an engine change in practice. So this is really just for pit pick. And continuing on through 17 through 20. Again, Kyle Larson and that 42 team did not get through tech inspection. And so they didn't even get out onto the track. That is why Kyle Larson will be starting 40th. talked about how the people on the outside are going to be nervous. I, I'm going to argue that a lot of these drivers need to have a little bit of nerves with this facility and this new pavement because last year we saw it. We saw it early. It started right in practice. Kozlowski into the wall. Seven-time champ Jimmy Johnson couldn't hold on to his race car. Had to go to a backup. And the crashes continued. They did the BNC. Denny Hamlin drives in a corner, just misses the bottom. He's behind. A car in front of him. Loses down force. Gets into the wall. A minor repair work they had to do. Kurt Busch. Guy lost the bottom, got it out of the groove, real dirty out of the groove, got the wall, then in the race. Now that was just practice, now we're in the race. And then the traffic only makes it worse. You see the 22, how about the 48 of Jimmy Johnson underneath Ryan Blaney? Just, you can't, you have less downforce, you're trying to turn the wheel. And we learned three wide definitely didn't work out. Three wide is not going to be the way you want to go. It's all 21 of Blaney, and then here we have... 15 car, but Clint Boyer underneath that, and he just lost the back end. No air on the back of the car. Once again, here he turns three. The corner's very, very flat. Not much grip on a slick racetrack, and it was an eventful weekend, Rick, and I'm not so sure why this weekend's going to be any different. <laughs> exactly. Well, I want to take a look at where the top four drivers will line up for tomorrow's race. Ryan Blaney, the best of the Blue Ovals. He'll start sixth. Kevin Harvick, seventh. And Harvick was another one of those drivers who the four team took a little while getting through tech, but once they did get through tech, they were able to get out onto the racetrack, and he will start in the top ten. And Rick, let's just clear this up just so everybody at home understands, because it's not raining. Right. You know, there's no rain right now at the racetrack, and, and they called it because there's lightning in the area. They want to clear the grandstands. They want to clear the spotters. They want to clear the, the officials, the, the crew members, the fans. They want to get them in a safe place. So we see NASCAR consistent with this. They have a radar that lets them know when it's that buffer zone, it's that eight mile range or so that they need to clear the grandstands and that's why the call today. It's it's uh it's not something we saw two, three, four years ago, but it's something they've been consistent with in the present in the interest of safety. So now as you look ahead, rain showers in the area. We saw last night the trucks had to go on the track after the rain. It always makes a difference. Oh, yes. And it, I think it's even worse when you talk about a repave because it takes so long for the track to kind of change. As cars run, it really does change. You adjust your car for it. You adjust your driving line for it. Now, if this rain shower does get here, blows through, we see an Xfinity race later, these younger drivers, remember, most of these drivers have less experience than the cup drivers. They're going to have to find their way around this very treacherous one-and-a-half-mile track, kind of, you know, 
patiently while trying to keep their track position that they've earned. I always love the word patiently at a racetrack where guys are trying to get in front of someone else. And I think about when I'm on the freeway and I think, okay, which lane do I want to choose? Because I want to get in front of that guy that's in front of me. Well, now at 200 miles per hour into that. I thought it was great last week at Daytona. We heard it. Hey, man, be patient getting up through there, but you got to go now. <laughs> Patience at a racetrack. Stay with us. More from Kentucky.